<laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, the Halifax explosion. Um, we went over then. My father rigged the place up for us. He went down and got a couple of rolls of tar paper. And he fixed the roof up as we could. We had a shelter anyway. Then the next day the great big snowstorm came. So my father said, I think he said we should go to Halifax and see if we can see anything at Carol's. Well, we went along Gardigan Street and got to the corner of Russell Street. And there was one lone statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary standing there in the snow. And the rest was all down. There had been an awful lot of children killed in St. Joseph's School and Alexandra McKay School. And down from that was North Albert Street. Well, you couldn't get down there because the soldiers was there. And they had flat wagons. And the people were, fro some of them were starting to freeze. And they were still burning. They were still burning. Because their hall stoves and their kitchen stoves and all that stuff had all come down when the, mm -hmm. you know, when the houses come down and upset the stoves and stuff, of mm -hmm. course, the explosions. That's what started the fires. And some of the, even the, uh, even the horses in the fire engines. There was one horse I think they kept on Bedford Road till it died. It was blind in the Halifax explosion. A white horse mm -hmm. used to be in the fire department. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, there was the one lone statue standing there. And they had stacks of bodies as high as this room when they were getting them out. And then they had men with horses and carts. And you, did you see this? Or you oh, about sure. It? saw it all, sure. Mm -hmm. So right by a post, and I look at that post today when I go along, right at that same corner. Mm -hmm. It's a different post, of course, because mm -hmm. this is years ago. Uh, there was a little parcel laying there. And the man come along and he gave it a kick. It was in the snow. And the man gave it a kick, and my father said, Hey, hold on the merriment, he said. So my father stooped down, and it was an old patchwork quilt. And inside of it was a little child about two years old, frozen as stiff as a board. And it was laid there waiting for the wagons to come along and pick it up. Well then, if you want to identify your people, you went to the schools. Because Shibukto Road, the old Shibukto Road school, was full of corpses. Every desk had a corpse on it. And then uh, snows down there, the parade you couldn't get through for caskets, stacked high, high, high. And then uh, but they were getting bodies out, and then a lot of people, the Americans, anyone can say what they want about the, the Americans, they were, they were wonderful. My mother said she never heard and never saw such wonderful people. They had train loads of nurses and people coming in here for days. And they took some of the children back that they didn't know who they were. The parents were gone and they just picked these children up and took them and brought them up. And of course when some of the kids grew up they came back looking for their people. Some they found and some they didn't because their people were gone and nobody, mm -hmm. you know. And then there was another particular couple that we got to know years later. His name was Billy Farron and he was the purser I believe on the Cyrus Field, the cable ship. Well he went to look, his wife and daughter were both killed in the Halifax explosion. And old Billy died about ten years ago. He was quite an elderly man when he passed on. Because he was a man at that time, he was on the cable ship. He was on the Cyrus Field. And he was on the Lord Kelvin. And I believe he was on that other boat there that picked all the bodies up. Uh, the John W. McKay. That picked all the bodies up from the uh, Titanic. He was on the John W. McKay. And you can go out to um, Fairview and see all them graves out there. Mm 